the sound is fine from my end, um, and I hope it's going to be from yours. I'll try not to move. And I'll put the uh, headset closer to my mouth. Okay, that should be much better, right? Now just let me know if that's any better. Yeah, okay, I've got the uh, mic in my mouth, practically. Okay, so um, let's continue. So really important to think of the purpose. Now, online tests, like any activity, because an online test is, in fact, on activity. It's just a test, but it's something that the students should be engaged in. You're talking about these, uh, a website, Kirsten. All right, let's try it out, maybe. I'll try it myself and see what's going on there. And it has to be real to life. Because what's the point of testing uh, in a way or on a topic that will never fit real life? It has to be real to life because, let's face it, in real life, we do not get tested in the traditional sense that we do in school. So why not make sure that it's real to life, authentic, meaningful, and fun. Fun for everyone at all ages. Okay, and Kirsten, you're talking about kinds of tests. We'll talk about the different kinds. And here we are. Someone mentioned, uh, Hassan, I believe you mentioned formative assessment. Now the question is, are we going to call it evaluation or assessment? What word do you prefer? E or A? E. Interesting. <laughs> I think there are two different purposes. Like what? Okay, it depends. Right. Could you type your question, Ellie? I did not hear it. Um, okay, I'll type it. What do you prefer? Uh, evaluate, evaluation or assessment? Yeah. If you think there's a difference, could you add it in the chat box? Assessment is for feedback and evaluation for making a decision assessing can you assess someone for a job or assess someone for a role that's the question tatiana is there a difference and if so what is the difference okay so we assess we evaluate to get to the next level and we don't assess to get them to the next level for job. So is that assessment or is that evaluation? I want to evaluate your work. I want to assess your work. Job assessment, but not an evaluation report about a new position. So you see what you're saying, Judy? You're saying exactly what Hassan said about assessment, but you're saying it about evaluation. Evaluate to minimum. Assess to maximum. 
Well, most people use them interchangeably. They might say assess and they might say evaluate. It depends on you. More like a judgment. I thought evaluation, eval give someone value, is more like a grade. Okay, so um, I don't think there's a clear-cut difference between the two. Uh, people use them interchangeably. That too, Nevis, exactly. It could be a, a cultural, it could be, you know, um, a lot of things. Okay, but what is clear is whether you use evaluation or assessment, formative only has one meaning when it comes to assessing or evaluating. So what is formative? Notice the word form. Okay, maybe that's the key form. We want to form what? An opinion, right. We want to form an opinion of someone. How do we form an opinion of someone? What do we do? Right, you can't form an, an opinion, uh, you know, right there and then. Okay, one, two, three, opinion. Okay, it takes time. That's right. Very good, Kirsten. It, it's, that's right. It takes time. And hello, Rosemary, good to see you. Yes, Abhi Lash, that's right. The valuation is, could be broader. That's how I see it. But again, it's, you know, it's how you view it. Formative is something that you form an opinion over time. The question is, how do you form an opinion of someone, whether it's a student, a worker? Formative assessment. It's usually called formative assessment and not formative evaluation. Okay, it goes with assessment, exactly. Range of formal and informal assessment, exactly. It's called assessment. But what is a formative assessment? Is it formal or informal? Now, nah, you got his camel. <laughs> it's every seven weeks. It's over time. Would you say it's formal or informal? I think that's just going to confuse it. It's not standardized. It's informal, exactly, which is confusing, Kurt uh, Nevis, which is why I say form an opinion. If you can remember, because I think that ASAN got mixed up, if you can remember form an opinion, you'll realize that formative assessment is simply finding out what is going on. It has nothing to do with standardized tests. Okay, standardized tests is called summative assessment. When you take all the grades, okay, 100, 90, 60, 70, 50, 70, whatever, and then you come up with an average. You sum up all the numbers, and the numbers are very, very standardized. You base your tests on a standard. Exactly. So sum is a sum of all these numbers that don't have, well, they may have meaning, but it's definitely formal. That's right. Thank you, Tom. It's definitely opinion informal. Excellent. It's definitely formal, okay? Uh, because what you're getting is uh, across the school, across uh, a state, a country, a nation. Okay, everybody takes the same test. And do you have summative tests in your countries? Summative tests, summative all the time? Okay, where you have to pass tests. Thank you, Nevis. Where you have to pass tests either at the end of the year or, you know, Otherwise, you can't go on, and everybody has the same test. Okay, most countries have this, and that's how they base their, uh, you know, if the country is, uh, you know, at a high level, a low level, a medium level, twice a year. 
Okay, Josephina, thank you. So summative tests have a purpose. Okay, what they try to do is they try to um, give a picture of um, a school, an area. Okay, so it's standardized tests to get information about, not about people, <laughs> about the schools. They don't care about individuals. Okay, maybe they do. They want to help them. But it's not about learning. It's about information, you know, information. Did they get the information? Are they able to speak English, write English at a certain level? Okay, so that's the summative. If you're talking about e-portfolios and portfolio assessment, that's very form formative assessment. Okay, now when do you do this? When do you give um, formative assessment? Because that's where you're going to get information. If you want a, information about uh, a person's skills, development, and so on, do you do it before, during, or after? Tom says all. And even with a summative, usually summatives come at the end or, you know, at the end of a certain period. Um, yeah, all stages, because you want to know where students are. You want to get feedback of what's happening. Okay, you want, as a teacher, you want information. Maybe they want information about where they are. Um, and maybe their family, you know, it could be their parents, it could be their husbands, wives, children maybe you want about their parents who are studying. Yeah, exactly, Tom. So we're looking for progress. If you have to go from 1 to 10, you want to know where they are on a scale of 1 to 10. Are they at the end or do they have more do they need more time? And what exactly is holding them from getting from 1 to 10? Exactly. Very good, Rosemary. Right. We want to be proactive and we want to be able to know what's going on. So this is actually, well, you tell me, why? Why do we have this kind of um, testing? What are we after? Yeah, it helps everybody know where they are, okay? The family, uh, the teachers, the students, okay? So why? What is the purpose of having tests before, during, and after? To take up remedial measures. There, you've answered it there, Apilash. It's for the purpose of, and proactive, Rosemary also, improvement. You want to improve the situation. Exactly. Okay, so the purpose is improvement, which is a very proactive thing to do, right? You want to improve the situation. You don't want to punish. Remember I mentioned the word punish? Because for a lot of uh, people, Tests is a kind of punishment. You know, it's, um, for example, um, if I, I have students um, for an MA program, transpersonal at, the univer at Atlantic University, and they're supposed to know APA style, but they don't know APA style. And I don't teach them APA style, but they're supposed to know APA style. So if they're responding to a question, um, and they don't go by the criteria or the rubric, which is to write APA, you know, to put citations correctly and the references correctly. If they don't do it, and I never really teach them how to do it because I'm not supposed to, um, they get penalized. They get punished. And they can't get 100. They can't get 100 unless they uh, comply by APA. So it's not, it's not bad. You know, it's going about it the wrong way. But what I do, because I think this is wrong, what I do is they make their mistakes and then I point their mistakes and then I tell them, okay, resubmit. Now, resubmit. How many of you like it when your students resubmit? That's right, Apilash. 
Exactly. It should be very constructive. That's the whole point. That's right. Resubmit. Now, resubmit for a teacher is a lot of work, especially if you're talking about like pages and pages of, um, you know, um, articles that they have to write and you have to read and then they write it and then they don't know how to write. And I'm talking about native speakers who don't know how to write. They're not English teachers, so they don't know how to write. And they're doing an MA program and they don't know how to cite. They don't know how to reference. Okay, so you ask them to resubmit. It takes a lot of work, but it's the only way they're going to learn. So teachers have to work hard. Um, but that's part of the game. Exactly. Yeah, you don't penalize them for making mistakes. That's the whole point. I think this is a really important point there. You don't penalize anyone for making mistakes. Uh, in fact, I encourage people to make mistakes. You're right, Tom. Most people cannot. I encourage people to make mistakes. Make mistakes. Okay, but be ready to learn from your mistakes and to improve. Okay, so it's really about formative assessment. It's about watching them improve and not make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Okay, so learn from your mistakes and not repeat them. Exactly, Tom. Okay, is a way to learn. All right, you mentioned different kinds of online tests. That's right, Tatiana, very good. So these are, maybe you can think of others. Okay, you can, but these are um, some online. Remember, we're talking about online, so it's a bit different. Uh, the paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes. Okay, sometimes one is correct, sometimes more than one. And choose from a list and a scale. Does everybody um, know these for online? Everyone familiar with them? Yeah, you could add gap filling. Now, Rosemary, you mentioned gap filling. I believe with word banks, missing words. Yeah, paragraph uh, text means, yeah, it's only text. No audio, no video. Very good, Abby Lash. Online, we can also have drag and drop. In other words, we can have images. We can add audio, video files, and so on. In class, dra drag and drop. Judy, I, I must have missed what you said before. In class? You mean to print things out. Yeah, you can print all of these out. Very good, Judy. That's a very good point. You can print out everything and do it face-to-face. -face. But what is the value in online tests as opposed to on paper? Besides the trees, that's right. Not just automatic scoring, but it's easier to check. And of course, Judy, you mentioned it, save paper, right? And they can do it multiple times. That's right, Josefina, that's a good point. They can do it over and over again until they get it right. Some online tests are interactive. Very good, that's right, Nevis and audit. But not just interactive, they can also add... Um, multimedia and they can record their voices they can do it in the classroom with their um, smartphones too but it's but it's still going to go online because you're not going to collect cds right okay so technology is allowing us to really do amazing things online with testing okay now on WizIQ, have any of you created um an online test on WizIQ. I want to point to some of the value. First, we'll go through some of the uh, process. 
and then we'll talk about some of the values. Not yet. Okay, not most of you have not. Okay, so you have a chance to do it this week. Just go in there and um, try one. Okay, hi, Brian. Good to see you. <laughs> You're waiting for this. I don't believe you, Tom. If anything, you could have been proactive and done one and then, you know, seen what it's like. All right, so the first thing when you create a test, okay, you create a test and you add a title and a description. And then you add instructions. You have a discussion thread and you can share it in and out of WizIQ. Now, remember what I said in the previous slide? I think it was this slide. Yeah. Remember what I said? Okay, Brian, you missed it. Remember these points. Oh. And the points were socially engaging, instruction and learning, community building, and social networking. All of these will be included in the test. Okay, so let's go back to... So keep that in mind for those of you who came in late. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So we're on slide number... There we are. Okay, so these are the different parts. Okay, so this is an example of a teacher. I took this from a teacher. Now, how did I get into a teacher's... I mean, how did I get this from another teacher? Any ideas? How could I possibly get this? Because on WizIQ, I can't go log in as someone else like I can on Moodle. That's right, Judy. Exactly. That, that's right. Judy's right. No, nobody sent me this assignment. No. This is a teacher. Every assignment can be shared. Remember, everything on WizIQ can be shared because there's a link and you can share. Okay, so um, I saw this. It was a public, it's a public test that um, this teacher had created. So this is, you can have public tests. You can make your tests public. Okay, so this is really important. No, it's not an assignment, Tom. Okay, this is a test on WizIQ. It's a public test. Okay, it's a test for um, learners of English, for uh, TO, for TOFL, for TOEFL, for TOEIC, for ILTS. Are you ready? Are you familiar with these tests? What kind of tests would you are these? TOEFL, TOEIC. What kind of tests are they? Are they summative, formative, anything informal, formal? MC, summative, English teacher's website, summative, summative. Okay, they're standardized tests. Very good. Okay, they are summative. Okay, they sum up all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, this uh, particular vocabulary test has 10 questions, one section. You can get 10, okay, so one per question, one point per question. The description is test your vocabulary knowledge with this test exam, and then you can start the test, or you can cancel. It's up to you. All right, so let's take a look at the instructions. You might not like these instructions. The dog ate my assignment. Tom, what assignment can a dog eat? An online dog? Well, there are online dogs, right? Uh, what was it called? Tamaguchi or something? This is a multiple choice test. Click the start test button below to start. Attempts allowed unlimited. There is a negative marking of, I hate this, 25% for wrong choices selected. What do you think of this part? Everybody for it? Negative marking. What does this mean? What does it mean? Negative marking of 25%. What does that mean? 
I was afraid to take the test when I saw that. You lose. <laughs> you lose. When you're loose, you lose. You're right. Definitely, Brian. What do you lo- What do you mean? In other words, you cannot guess. No guessing. Every time you guess the wrong answer, but maybe that's what you think. So, but you get unlimited attempts. Okay. But you lose points if you do, you know, so you, you lose, you lose. In any case, you lose. Okay. So I think Brian is right. Uh, the question in pause. Okay. Time allowed unlimited. Okay. Which is nice. A question and the possible answer choices appear. Select the choice question. So it's definitely multiple choice. Use next and previous. You can go back and forth. After you finish the test, click on submit test button to submit. Any questions? If you have any questions, where do you go? You go here to this PowerPoint presentation. Okay, and you can get further information. So you can add. What does this mean? It means that you can add to your test. You can add files. But how do you add the file? How do you add? If you want to add a file on WizIQ to your test, how are you going to do it? How are you going to add the file? Link, Tom, exactly. Okay, so linking, that's how you're going to do it. Okay, so you need to upload it to your account, to your content, upload content, get a link and share that link when you give the instructions. Okay, and then there is a discussion a threaded discussion. Here's the author, in case you don't know, it's L.B. Hattersley, okay, who's on WizIQ, and me. Who's me? It's the student. Okay, the student is me, and I can add a question, and I can also respond to and add my comment to the author. So this is social networking? Is it socially engaging or is it community building or what is this? Okay, let's go back. What is this? Remember the uh, the five? I think it's here. What is this? Socially engaging, instruction and learning or a combination, community building or social networking? Exactly, Tom. It's exactly the same thing. And that's what it's a combination. And that's what I was trying to say that even for tests, Wiz IQ has this um this feature. Okay. Let's get back to okay, this feature of the threaded discussions, which is really good. Okay, so number one, I can share the test. And how can I share it? I can share it with my contacts on WizIQ. I can share the test with people whose emails I have. And these can be my students in the face-to-face class or a fully online class. I don't have to have a WizIQ course to do this. I can create a test and share the test with my students wherever they happen to be in any even on Moodle, if I wish, but I wouldn't, okay? Or on maybe Facebook, wherever I have my class. If I have a group on Facebook and I want to have tests, I can do them on WizIQ and then invite them by entering their emails, okay? Uh, And then number three, the invitation to take the test, and then I can add a message to... So this is the same thing that you would have when you're writing a message to someone when you're sharing live classes. Same thing. You can share content in the same way. Share content, share a live class, and share a test. That's how you do all three. No, Nevis, it doesn't have to be. So it's really a good way of doing it. So you can start a test like that and then share it. And then this is what it looks like if you share it in your WizIQ contacts. I think I have about 1,400 contacts. And then that's how you click on all. Okay, notice the all button. It's right there. 
you click on all and then you simply edit you add a message that you want to send at the bottom and these are the people if it's all but if you want to take some people off you can take some people off by putting an X next to their name. So notice all these features that maybe you never noticed. And this is the same thing that you have, again, for content. Same story for content sharing on WizIQ. You can share the content this way for live classes on WizIQ and for the tests. Isn't that great? So it's really a socially engaging activity because you can get other people involved. You can ask them to take your test, and I hope you're going to do this during the week. Create a test, share it with us, with me, so we can take your test and um, get smarter by taking the test because testing is supposed to really help us learn. Okay, that's the idea behind a test. So any questions so far? How to make it public? Um, it is public. It's all public. The minute you have a link, it makes it public. It's not like a class, like a, uh, sorry, like a uh, class that you need to decide if it's public or private, or a course if you have to decide if it's public or private. A test will always be public if you have a link. You can share it, and that makes it public. Okay? Uh, but that was a very good question. Notice here your WizIQ accounts. You get here, and then you start the test. After you share it, you start it. And then you have the other option, and this uh, is your social network. You can share it on Facebook. You can share it on Twitter. This is, makes it public. I mean, this indicates, Nevis, that it's definitely public, right? and you can share it. But if you have a link to your courses, you can do the same thing and share it on LinkedIn. Do you all have a Facebook account? Give me a thumbs up if you've got a Facebook account. Thumbs up. I hate my Facebook account. I don't like Facebook anymore. I'm hating it by the day. Well, it's been, I've been having this love-hate relationship with Facebook for over a year. Okay, how many of you, um, you like it better. How many of you have Twitter? You like Twitter better? Oh, you are, Nevis? I wonder what's happening to us. Yeah, it just doesn't, yeah, I just don't get it anymore. And I've been there from it since the beginning. Twitter is a lot more appealing for educators, by the way. If you want to connect with educators, it's a lot more appealing to go with um, Twitter. And then G plus, how many of you like G plus, Google plus? Seems cleaner. I don't know. Facebook just seems to be so dirty these days. With I don't know. G plus, yes. And then LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is really um, much more, I don't know, sophisticated. I don't know. Maybe because it costs a lot of money to go pro. Linked. LinkedIn. Everybody have LinkedIn? LinkedIn? Yes. Okay, you can connect with me. Uh, LinkedIn, if you haven't, uh, anybody can connect with me. I will not complain if you connect. I don't mind. Okay, so there's LinkedIn. So these are social networks. Now, notice here what this means here. 29 followers follow this member. Again, when you share your test, it will tell the person who is getting the test how many followers you have. This is a public test. And you can also send a message to the person. And I think this is really nice. Send a message to the person who created the test. Okay, so it's really engaging in social networking. Oh, you are? Okay, so check. Let's connect. I like LinkedIn. All right, notice the discussion. You, If you have a question, you can, and this is social engagement 
with the questions. And that's it. There's my flowers that I missed out in spring. So it's summer flowers. Any questions that you may have, questions, comments, and so on. I see some people joined that I didn't notice before. Um, any questions? What I'd like to do is, if you could write them in the chat, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite you to the course if I can find the link to the course. Anybody have the link to uh, the course? I think I had it on my mouse, but I don't. I have something else there. Uh, to learn to blend and flip with technology. Anybody have it handy? All right, so what I'd like you to do for this week, what I'd like you to do for this week is create a, thank you, Tom, there's the link to the course. What I'd like you to do is um, create a test. Make it, you know what, make it a meaningful te test, okay? It, of course, um, you know, don't test us on information, but like a survey, maybe you'd like to know more about us. So create something that is engaging, that's meaningful to you, so that um, you can learn something about each other. So think of a test where you can get information about us. Personal information. Exactly, Tom. And, and it's still a test, right? It's a test because you're testing our ability to... You know, it's some kind of evaluation, assessment. It's it's a way to get information. Test is about getting information. You want information from us. It doesn't have to hurt. That's very good, Brian. You need to work it out. Oh, I'm glad you finally have your teacher account. Uh, feel free to contact support. They're very good. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, they do not um, do anything that will harm your computer or anything like that. Even if they need to go in to help things out, help you with your audio, um, they have what's called Team. I think it's Team Viewer that they use. It'll not harm your computer, so don't be afraid. Um, but if you have a question, if you your audio is not working or anything else, if you're having problems, feel free to contact support. They are trustworthy. They know what they're doing. Why not free? It should be free, ta uh, Brian. It has to be free for teachers. Okay, Wiz IQ is free for teachers. If you're an organization, that's another story. If you'd like to get your organization... Uh, using WizIQ, that costs money, but WizIQ is free for teachers. Remember that. Okay, you get a free premium account. Uh, I think it's worth something like, uh, I don't know, $600 or $300 or I don't know how much. So feel free if you um, are having problems, contact me. Uh, it's free for teachers. Yeah, and you need to renew it every year. But all you have to do is say, I'm a teacher. And if you don't have a teacher, if you don't work in a school that has an email, just say that you teach. doesn't matter. You know, you'll get it. Okay? So we'll see you. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And uh, we'll see you next week for another session on understanding with IQ and testing. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with and taking your test and getting a hundred. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you.